Perfect. All right, guys. Sorry about the waiting. Uh, it's because there was a big change in the rooms. But for today, we're going to use this room. But next week, I'll send you guys an email of the official room that we're going to have for the upcoming Tuesdays. For today, we're going to be here. And for those that just came in today and weren't able to come last week for our Unit Zero, uh, my name is Guillermo. I am a third year business information management student. And <clears throat> I'm part of this organization called CodePath. And what they do is they teach iOS developments, Android, and also cybersecurity through universities for free. So the reason why they're doing it is because they notice that a lot of universities don't teach cutting edge technologies like these skills that we're teaching you right now. And so this organization stepped up and started developing through their own engineers curriculums for iOS development, Android development, cybersecurity, and hopefully in the future they will implement <clears throat> other courses like uh, for, what do you call it? Uh, web development. So, could someone help her open the door over there in the back, please? Thank you. So, when I learned iOS development last summer, I learned it through Make School. It was a six week course in which it was every day from 9 to, 9 to 5 p.m. And it was really intensive, but it was a really great experience. And I wanted to, after I learned how to do iOS development, I wanted to teach people how to do it. So, when I came here, there was already the organization here, and my friends were already teaching it, and I wanted to step up and help them out. So this quarter, I'll be the one teaching. <clears throat> so that's enough about me. Um, we're going to do a more recap of what we did last year, last week, because I know that there are some people that this is their first day since they enrolled like last week and couldn't make it to Unit Zero. So we're going to go ahead and talk about um, some of the assignments that you guys will be working on. And the first one is... Uh, we're going to be working with APIs, table views, and flicks. So in this today's class, we're going to go over these topics, and I want to make sure that you guys are good to go for the homework, which is due on Sunday midnight. So let's go over the details of the project. So for the flicks project that you're going to be working on this week, you can find it on the course portal. So as I stated before, everything is going to be on the course portal. You, there you can find the syllabus, guides, uh, resources, tutorials on how to do certain things. And to get started on your first assignment, you can find it under Unit 1, and you click on Assignment. Now, um, I'll show you what it, it consists of. I made my own assignment, so I can show you guys what you guys are going to be working with after the demonstration. But next, uh, I want you guys to know that you're not alone in the assignments. We have instructional videos that will guide you through the process of doing the assignments. And if you do get stuck, you can either go through the discussion system, talk to another student that, you're, that you know, or even uh, set up a meeting with me. I am available on Fridays or after class for office hours. But if you guys want to meet up for office hours on Fridays, you have to email me so I can set up a meeting with you guys. Um, unfortunately, I can't do it this Friday because I have a dentist appointment, which is from 12 up till I don't know how long they last. But usually my office hours on Fridays will be from 12 to 2 p.m. But you have to email me and I will set up a place to meet up. And uh, next, we're going to go through submitting assignments. So I want you guys to carefully look at this GIF, or GIF, and make sure that you understand the process of submitting an assignment from now on, because it'll be the same throughout the entire course. So it'll restart again in a bit. So you go to Unit 1, Assignment, and then you'll see that button on the top right corner of the assignment. And all you have to do is submit your GitHub URL, your GIF URL, how many hours you spent on it, and a couple notes if you want to add into it. But those are the gist of it. So next, we're going to go through the deadline of it. So <clears throat> all assignments are due Sunday midnights. And I just want to remind you that this assignment is also due Sunday midnight. But from now on, all the assignments that we will be <clears throat> posting on the course portal are going to be due Sunday midnights. So make sure you guys wrote, write that down. And... We're going to go through attendance today, so if you guys can go to this link or the link I sent you guys to your email yesterday, it includes a link to the Google form, and I know that you can't sign up until you put this code in, because otherwise it will give you an error, but the code is do not share code, so I'll give you guys a minute to do that, and let me know when you guys are done.
You can type that up on your computer. So the coders do not share a code. That way I can prevent people from just sending out the code to someone else that they know and pretend that they're here in class. What is a class call? Right. Oh, okay. Didn't that share? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no worries. Mm -hmm. everyone, everyone good? Awesome. We're going to go to the next section. So if you guys want, I'll go back to it just in case. So we're, next, we're going to talk about getting help for the course. So I want to let you guys know you're not alone. There are many other universities in the nation going through iOS development right now. Purdue University, CSU San Jose, CSU <clears throat> San Francisco, uh, San Diego, UC San Diego, UC Berkeley, New York University. Arizona State University, all these other places are teaching iOS development with us. So because of that, we have a, our little mini Stack Overflow page for us where we can go in and like type up what we're concerned with, like either a question or maybe an error that we're getting. People, students have already gone through it. And these are questions that have already been asked since like three years ago. So, and the projects are still relevant today. So if you guys get stuck, there's a discussion system that we have. I'll show you where to go in your course portal where you can find it so you guys can go in and see where to ask for help. And I also mentioned off office hours, so if you guys get stuck and did, weren't able to find anything here, you guys can talk to me or, or and set up a meeting and we can go over some stuff if you need to. Or maybe you just want to learn some more iOS that I can provide to you. And next we're going to talk about the homework policy. So this is a class that is heavily participant or interactive so in this class I hate having viewers I don't like having people just sitting there and watching me which is why I'm gonna make this class a little bit more interactive with you guys so that's why I'm gonna make these presentations short and concise so as soon as like the 15 minute clock hits I'll probably be done and we're gonna get started with our in-class assignment that we have I prepared for you guys today but otherwise I'm gonna, I want to remind you about the homework extension you have three 48 hour extensions so that means that if you are late or didn't get to finish the assignment, you get three hour extensions. So if you don't get to turn it in by Sunday midnight, then you will have until Tuesday midnight to submit the late assignment and you will still get full credit. After that, if you, only, if you use up all your extensions, then you will just get the grade for what you submitted the project. Like let's say you were stuck on the implementing the table view. Well, that's, that's where it's gonna be at. We're gonna grade it at that point, the last GitHub commit that you did. So make sure that you guys be aware of this and after that you will be marked off points a lot like 70% off. So make sure you guys stay on top of your assignments and I believe I will be here for to help you so that you guys don't miss any assignments and don't use any extensions. So we're gonna go over now through the homework recap. So in case oh actually everyone was here when I talked. It's because yesterday there were some people that came in late, so I had to recap the whole thing. But as you guys know already, or for those who are new, everything is on courses.codepath.com. Everything is there. Your syllabus, your assignments, the resources, the guides, tutorials, everything is there. So if you guys need anything to work on or don't know where to go, courses.codepath.com. Make sure you guys bookmark that because that's where everything is located. And all your assignments, they're always going to be in the assignment tab. I know <clears throat> I've noticed that some of you noticed a little tab that says lab. Don't worry about that. They're no longer so you don't know you don't need to submit those anymore. We did that last quarter and we noticed that it was a bunch of heavy workload for you guys. So a lot of students turned out to just drop out the course because there was a lot of workload. So this quarter we're only doing the assignments only. However, I will do some of the labs with you in class so you guys know what the homework is going to be like. So you guys can like know what, you, what to expect. Now next we're gonna go, <clears throat> you already know about the deadline, all the questions and everything. And now I want to go over some reminders. Everyone's here, so we all know what, what's going on. But make sure you guys pay attention to this part.
get started early. If you start right now, I guarantee you, you will finish and probably even make your app even way better than what it, like the basic version does. Because <clears throat> I know that a lot of students will, if you're like me, when I started doing this assignment, I like to, when I finished, I was like, oh shoot, maybe I want to add this, like a, a section table headers, or maybe I want to add the, also the, a, a way to alert the user when there's an error on the internet, all that kind of stuff. You guys will feel the same and you will feel like you want to add all that stuff, but make sure you finish the project first and then you do all that cool stuff. Because I, I have that um, nick in me where I, I like to do other stuff, like make it look prettier and then do the actual assignment. But make sure you do the basic requirements first. So do you guys have any questions so far about what we talked about today? No? Cool. So after this, I'm just going to go talk about um, before we get to coding, we're going to talk about a little bit about the discussion portal and the discussion system and the course portal. So you, for the new people that are here, I'll show you what to go, where to go. And also, I want to talk about the the um, the demo day. So for those that, who are new, we have this thing called demo day. So by the end of the quarter, you guys should be done with by with your. <clears throat> You guys should be done by week six with all the projects. And after week six, you will be working with teams and making your own app from scratch. And after you finish that, after the quarter, you will be, you can or not, if you don't want to, participate in demo day. So what is demo day? Well, fortunately, there is a Google link that talks about it. You guys can read about it. You can just Google it. It's right here. But this is what happened in 2015. So a lot of students go there, about 100 students participate. They flew out to San Francisco, they went and they, the demo day was hosted at the Lyft headquarters. Every year it changes, sometimes it might be at Slack headquarters, sometimes it could be at Facebook headquarters, it depends. But on 2015, they hosted it in, uh, at Lyft headquarters and the prizes included $15,000 worth of scholarships for you guys and a lot of other things like internships or interviews right off the bat from the companies that are there participating and looking at your presentations. So if you guys want to read more about it, these are there's a great blog about it. it talks about what goes on and all the the designers winners, all the winners who were there. The apps, you can check out the apps too that they made. Um they're, they're, and you can I highly recommend you look at them. They're really good ideas that you guys can use for your project later on. So you can just google it. I iOS CodePath <clears throat> Demo Day, and you'll see a, a bunch of blogs from students who have participated in Demo Day. It's really awesome. And now we're going to talk about co the course portal. So this is your go-to for everything that you do in this course. Course portal right here. I'm going to make this smaller. There we go. So as you can see right now, we should be in Unit 1. And every week, it should automatically change. Every time you want to go and check out the assignment, you go into assignment tab and it'll show you everything that you need to do for your homework. As for lab, you don't need to do anything about it, but I, re I highly recommend it if you want to learn more and get better at coding in iOS. Sorry about that. <clears throat> and if you're stuck on something or you want to learn how to make your app better, there's some guides that go through everything. So after you click, it's here on guides, iOS guides. If you click there, you can search up anything that you want. So maybe you want to uh, do scroll view, you want to implement a UI image, you want to implement an interface, animations. I know you guys want to make games maybe, like a Flappy Bird version or something. You can, do, you can work with animation. There's also retrieving locations in case you guys want to work with map, with the map view. Um, or if you guys want to do like another Instagram or AR, there's also tutorials on working with the camera and some ARs tutorials. There's another, where's the other ones? There's more than this. You can even search it up. For example, I could do a search bar, which I will show you guys how to do in, in later on. You could do progress HUD, so you guys know when you refresh the page, it shows like a little loading cursor. You, that You need to implement that. That iOS will not do it for you. You got to learn how to do that. You can do a template, a custom tab bar. So if you guys load this on top where it says back, or you can implement your own buttons that you want. 
map kit if you guys want to work with maps it's a really great tool to work with map kit so it'll show you how to work with everything like how to zoom in on the map zoom in out add places that you already know etc so that's guides and now I want to talk about the discussion system so if you guys have any questions the discussion system is right here on the top right top middle ish you, you can just click on it and it'll take you straight into the discussion system and here's where you can see all the kinds of errors that are going on right now. Some are still unresolved. Some are resolved already. So, um, and there's way more. There's already 746 questions already that have been posted ever since we started CodePath. So, you guys are not alone, and you guys have a bunch of resources out there. So make sure you guys take a take advantage of them. So let's get coding now. So I sent you guys a project starter for for today and if you don't let me know and I'll email it to you but um, I want you guys to get in pairs so people who were not here last week raise your hand pair up with someone who's not raising their hand um, and I want pairs of two or three and make sure you get so you guys huh yeah but if we do pairs of three that'll be great because if we do it by threes, then there'll they'll be enough people who don't have their hands raised. So people who have their hands raised, meet up, go with someone who, has, who does not have their hand raised. And make sure there's at least three people in your group. Awesome. And if you guys can go on your email, I sent you guys a project starters for today's class assignment. And we're going to go over table views. Yeah, that's fine. Or who has a team of two? There's no team of two, right? Okay, yeah, that's fine. So if you guys can surround or get in the let the person that came last week be in the middle so that you guys can uh, know what everyone's doing. The project that we worked on last week, yeah. table views. I sent out a video on how to complete it. But today we're going to do a very similar exercise because I want you guys to actually, I'll say it in front of everyone. So last week, I showed you guys how to work on table views, how to get started and implementing your own table views. And today, we're going to be working on something completely similar because I want you guys to be proficient in table views. Because if you guys want to become iOS professional developers, you're going to realize that table views are life. It's everything. Everything is about table views. You are going to work on Twitter. It's all table views. You're going to see a bunch of table views. You're going to work on your own Instagram app. That's all table views. So we're going to do an assignment today in which you guys are going to get introduced to table views again. And I just want to do this so that you guys are completely like good to go with table views because those are that's like the basic thing that everybody should know. And I'm going to give you guys 20 minutes. So by 5.40, um, I will go back and do it for you guys. We're going to go through it. So I want you guys to go through the struggle together. And let's see how much you guys remember from how to do table views. If not, you can go on YouTube. And I've already done, I did the lecture for last week which is how to make table views. Uh, unit zero, UCI. And I made this video for you guys. Uh, for the people that came last week, there's a video that can show you how to work with table views. And in case you get lost, you can go back and refer to the video. 
<clears throat> and if not, if you guys want to go through the struggle yourself, you can also obviously go to courses.codepath and the guides, there's already guides on it that can show you how to work with table views. So there's, they have their own table view guide as well, but it's mostly written, so you kind of have to read a lot. That's why I made the video for you guys, so you guys can like know how to do it visually, just by looking at it. So for 20 minutes, here are the steps for it, and by the end, we're going to make something like this. Let me show you. I already have a complete version, so you guys can see what it should kind of will look like. Not completely. But <clears throat> we probably won't have time to go over section headers or the search bar. But if you guys stay a little longer after the 550 mark, which is the end of the actual class, uh, I do bonus coding challenges. And for the bonus today, we're going to do the UI search bar. So this is what you will end up with something, something like this. One. There you go. So it should have a table view of all the states as a section header and the cities as the content beneath it. So this is what you guys will probably finish by today, hopefully. If not, you guys should at least finish putting instead of all the cities and the states, just the, the states. It's fine. And if you stay after class, we're going to go through table UI search bars, which you can like search up the state and it'll give you all the cities from it. Florida, it'll give you everything from Florida. And if it's wrong, it'll just give you the whole thing again. Pretty cool. So I'm going to set up the instructions again. That's my homework. Don't look at that. So here are the instructions for it. Uh, let me just close this. Where's the other one? All right, I'm just going to leave my project ready so I can do it with you guys later on. For now, here are the instructions. If you guys need any help with it, I'll be I'll be here. So if you guys need help as a group, but make sure you guys use your group to help you guys out. Question? So, are you using any given uh, template that you sent? Yeah, you you're going to use Oh, yeah, yeah, my bad. So, on the template that I sent, it contains two fo two projects, two folders. One is called the table view section headers, and the other one is called the Tumblr lab. I want you guys to open up the table view section headers. And in that project, there's already a, a project file on it. I want you guys to open it. And this is what it should open up the project already. And I already put in some comments for you guys so you guys know, stay on track on what to do. And I also have the list here, which shows the step by step on how to do it. And I already set up a couple of things. So for example, the data, it's already here. What I want you guys to do is to go on your storyboard and, oh my gosh, it's so small. I really like the other screen. And <clears throat> I want you guys to set up the table view, add the data, connect the cell. I already created the cell file. I already created the view controller. And all you need to do is these steps right here, which I have them up right here so you guys can stay on track. So I'll give you guys 20 minutes, so around 6, I mean uh, 5, 5.43, we'll be done. And if you guys have questions or need any help, I'll be here. But make sure you take advantage of your group so you guys can help each other out. Because I want you guys to see what it's like to work as a group so that when you come and start doing your project, this is what it will be mostly like. Oh, shit. Do I have a what, sorry? Mm -hmm. I actually have a USB. Oh, yeah, the custom.
Um, so you work on some of and then you pass it to like. No. So I want you guys to work on together class, and if you guys want, you guys can like work on one computer, or you can they can work on their computers and you can help them out. No, she says not. But yeah, make sure you update the text later on in class. Yeah. Because I can't oh, yeah. oh, really? No, no, that's the case. What Mac operating system are you running on? Oh, you have Sierra. Yeah, you need to update your operating system. Yeah. yeah. I have the Xcode application on my USB, but not the old Java. Yeah. But when you go, I mean, I don't think it should take that long to update. You can try it. We have passes in right here. Wait, what about Sierra? So if you have Sierra, it's not going to open the project because your computer is outdated. What about High Sierra? High Sierra? It might work. Okay. But another student had Sierra, so it didn't open the project. I have that. Okay. It should work. Yeah. Oh, are you one of the new students? Yeah. Awesome. Um, What's your email? Or you have it, right? Can you ask your teammate to help you send it? Or do you have I didn't open it. Oh shoot! Try updating it. I think the internet's pretty fast here. And in the meantime, um, work with your teammates so that you know where you are, how to code it. Yeah. Um, Xcode, uh, Xcode updates along with the Mojave. Okay. Yeah, usually. Too much. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if it's possible to switch. 
like my email prep so I think you should yeah. you should be able on your course on your course portal uh, um, let me see or go to your your post level. Uh, I think you'd have to email them. Or I think you know what? You get you would have to change your GitHub names. Oh, okay. so it, it, remember you're using GitHub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we use GitHub to connect your accounts. So I would just change the. Oh yeah. Um, you're still not in the course yet. But so. Since you weren't able to come here, I know you're a grad student and everything, but I'll I'll add you to the course. So Bobby, so you can come with me so I can add you. I'm just gonna need some information. Yeah. I have a question. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, put X on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So oh, you can change it. It's because I like using the new phone. I'm trying to stay up to date. So you you can change it over here. No, right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the ch this changes the view. You can switch to iPad, iPhone XS, or even iPhone 5 if you want. And this is just what it's going to run it on, the emulator. Okay, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't want to get rid of the screen. Mm, I'll do it over here. Why doesn't this move? That's ugly. It's got a fan. Hmm. There we go. I'm gonna make an exception with you. I'm just gonna go ahead and add you. What's your name? Uh, Neha. I need to. S A D H A. S H. S A. S A. D S A. A. Oh, A. D H. D H. V I. V I. V I. And your email? Uh, like you want your personal email or like uh, UCI? The UCI email would be better. Okay. N S A D H N Sanfi. S A D H V I. Oh, okay. Oh, S A N S. N S A D H V I. S A S A D H D H V I. And what's your GitHub account username? Uh, it's Neha Sati. N H A S D H V I. Just like that? Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. No capital letters or anything. No. I don't think it. Yeah, I don't think that matters. So check because I added you. Yeah, check if it, it works now. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So you guys have about 10 minutes left. And don't worry, I'm going to go over this with you guys as well. And you'll see how 
once you guys get proficient, it should take about five minutes to set up a table view with all the cells. Yeah. You said you have the latest version of the textbook. Yeah, but you need Mojave. Oh, okay. Yeah, because even if I if I have the Xcode, okay. you still need to update it. It won't let you transfer it without okay. updating Mojave. Let me see, because it's still finishing the software. Okay. One more minute.
Yes. Alrighty, so who got stuck on who's still on number one? Raise your hand. Number one? Who's still working on like number one? You guys? Okay. Number two? In the middle of it. Number three? Anyone get that far? Awesome. Okay. I just want to know where you guys are. So what are some of the areas that you guys went through? I want to know where you guys are like struggling with. Okay, so it didn't want to connect the cell to the. Okay, what's another error that you guys were having? Oh, okay, you got it. Any other errors that you guys went through? Because I want you guys to learn collectively. So, what other issues did you guys run with? It wasn't, um, for me, it wasn't so clear on how to. I understood how to like do the um, how to add the table view, but not so much the cells that go inside there. How to add the cell yeah, in the table view? Yeah. Okay. That's kind of gotcha. Any other um, issues that you guys ran over with? Okay. So the main ones were connecting in the cell and adding cells to the table view. So basically playing around with the storyboard, right? Yeah. And like sometimes it's confusing when you should connect what with what. Like what color oh. I see. I'll go over those things and I'll clarify those up right now. So I'm going to run the project with you guys now. And we're going to go step by step as I have it up here. So the first step is create the table view, connect cities, the, the city to connect that table view to the view controller, set the delegate and the data source for the table view. And then from there on, add the basic functionality for the table views. All right. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead into our storyboard and in order to add a table view, you go to your resource or your library of functions. And you here you can search up anything that you want. In this case, we want table view. And you can see that it popped up three things. Table view controller, table view, and table view cell. The ones that we're going to be working on is, and make sure you don't get confused, don't add the table view controller. It's completely different. It adds a completely new controller to this. So if I drag this, you guys will notice it creates another screen with a table view already implemented and the cells already there. So that's a way of starting like a Instagram app or something, which will you guys use on later on. But for the for the sake of time and learning right now, I want you guys how to implement that all of that on your own instead of just you know creating one table view controller and bam, it's done like magic. So let's go ahead and add it ourselves. Why is this so small? I like the other screen better. So I'm going to go ahead and add a table view and you just click, drag and drop and I'm going to extend it all the way down to fit the screen so that it looks pretty and then I add the cell, that's the second step and you can add it right here, 
you have to add it within inside the table view. So you got to make sure that it's inside of it. And bam, there you go. So once it's inside, you can uh, we'll add the labels later on. But for now, I want to connect the table view. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and open up my cities view controller, this file. And in order to open up two files at the same time, there's a assistant editor up here on the top right corner. Oh, well, it doesn't show. Oh. But you guys know what it looks like, right, on your Xcode, if you're looking at it right now? It's uh, like two circles put together. You click on that one, and it'll open up your view controller file. Another way of doing it is by holding down the Alt or Option key and go and click the file that you want to open up. In this case, I want the view controller. So you hold the Option key, and then you just click on it, and it'll open it up for you. It's much easier for me. I prefer it that way, but you guys can do it in whatever way you want. So now the next step is, now that we have our file open, I want to add the table view and connect it to my view controller. So I'm going to go ahead and hold on to the control key, which is on the bottom left of your computer keyboard. And you're going to hold on to table view, click, hold it, drag and drop it over here to the outlet. And then you let go, and then you, you have to name it to something, whatever you want. In this case, I'm just going to call it table view. Something easy. And I can just close it now. So now that it's connected, I can see it over here. It created my outlet for the table view. Now I have to let know my view controller that there's a table view. So in order to do that, we're going to go into the override function, the view did load. This function basically what it does, it loads all the basic stuff that your app needs to do before launching, before what the user sees. So in this case, we're going to assign the table view data source. So you just type down the table view dot data source and you set that equal to self. And then you set the table view dot delegate equal to self. So what this is doing is saying uh, the table view, imagine them as a person and they're telling the view controller, hey man, you're going to you're going to handle me. I'm going to work for you. You're going to be my boss. You're going to manage all the, the data. So the source of the data, in this case, this data, you're going to manage that. And I'm going to let you manage myself too. That's what the delegate means. Delegate means to hand off someone a job to someone else. And self refers to the view controller, the class. In this case, it's my class called cities view controller. So this guy's in charge, but now it's giving me an error. Why? Because the cities view controller is telling me, hey man, I don't know how to work with table views. I don't have the tools necessary for it. And I don't have the permission to do it. So what do I do? I'm going to give that get that man permission. So I'm going to call the UI table view data source there. Now he has permission to manage the data. And I'm also going to give him permission to manage my the delegation there. Now he has permission, but then he's going to come to me and say, Hey man, I still have more issues. And what this basically means is that it does not conform to the protocol. That's just saying I do not have the necessary tools to manage a table view. Okay, I'll fix that for you. There you go. That's all you gotta do. But you can do that manually too. You can type up the functions for the table view. There's a lot of table views functions here and which you can like experiment with later on in your iOS career. But for now, the view control only needs two functions in order to manage a table view. The number of sections and the cell for row at. So this function right here, the number of sections, is how many cells you're going to have on your table view. And the cell for row at, this function will manage what is going to be within each cell. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to put these at the bottom to make it organized because I put a comment right here. Now we finished the first step. So we have the table view, we added the delegate and the data source, and we added the two function, the two main functions for our table view to start working. Now we're going to go into step two, add city cell, connect the label and connect it to the city cell class. Perfect. So this is where <clears throat> you guys might have gotten a lot of issues. So in order to do that, I already added my cell and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a label inside the cell. So make sure you drag and drop it, not outside the cell, inside the cell right here. Perfect. 
and I'm going to call this label city. Perfect. So now that I have a label in here, this is what's going to be shown on each cell. It's going to be showing me the name of each city, right? Or in this case, it's going to be the state. Um, because we won't be able to go over section headers. We're running out of time. So now we're going to connect the cell to the cell class. So if you guys noticed, I have a sorry, I have a city cell file that I created for you, which already has the, the class for it. All you need to do is connect the city name label and the cell to this class. In order to do that, there's two steps. So I want to click on the cell, which was right here, TWV cell. And then there, I want to click on the class I, uh, or the attribute inspector. And in here, this is where I, I tell it what class is going to be or what type of cell. And in this case, it's going to be a city cell. There. So now it's going to know what, what type of cell it is. It's a city cell. And I'm going to set an identifier, or in this case, a name, so that when I call it on my function tables, it's going to know what kind of cell it is. And I'm just going to call it city cell also. Perfect. So now it knows that it's a city cell. And before you guys connect the label, make sure sometimes it won't refresh. So what I do is I do a command B so that it builds a project. It will give you an error because we still have some errors going on. But don't worry. Now it knows so it, it refreshed and it knows what kind of, <clears throat> what kind of ce uh, cell it is. So now we can connect the label because it knows that it knows that my city cell class has a label, um, or no, we need to connect the label to it. So we're going to go ahead and add that label into our city cell. So I'm going to do the option and then click on a city cell to open up my, my city cell file. Now that I have that open, now I'm going to have, I'm going to add the label to it right here underneath my comment. So I'm going to go ahead and control and the labels right here which is state. That's why you guys should name all your buttons, your table views, so that you know which one's which. In this case, mine is state. So I'm going to add that label to my city cell. And I'm going to call it city label. Perfect. So now that I have that created, I'm going to go over here and make sure that it's there. Perfect. And if you see this little dot, and if you see a little white on it, that means that it's connected. That it's, uh, it's actually, it knows where it's coming from. So you're good. But if it was like, uh, if you had one like this, oh, it didn't show it. They probably updated to not do that. But if it's a circle and it's empty, it doesn't have any white around it, inside of it, that means it's not connected. Or maybe you created a connection and then you delete it. And so now this is like, hey man, you left me alone. You, you know, I'm not connected to anything. So now we finished second step. We added the label, the cell, we connected the cell through its class and identifier. Now we need to connect the data and display it on our table views. So we're going to go into our CDs view controller. Now that everything is in place, this is where you got to do some coding and remember some of your CS core knowledge that you've learned from ICS. So I told you guys that this is going to have the, the amount of rows, right? And we want to display this data. So how do we tell it that I want to display? And if you, as you can see here, it's a, it's an array of tuples. So each tuple has two things, the state and then the array of cities. But for now, I just want to show the states. So in this case, we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven tuples. Well, seven tuples, seven states, and each state has a good amount of cities but I only want to show the states. So how do I get the amount of tuples that I have here? I'm going to, sh there's a code in Python you would do uh, len of the array. And in Swift, you use something called count. And in this case, we're going to call data dot count. Data dot count. So now it knows it's going to return me seven tuples because that's how many tuples there are in this array. And Next, we have to tell it what is going to have each cell on it. So we have seven cells. Now I have to tell it what each cell is going to have. If I run it just like this, uh, or not, not yet actually. In order to do that, we're going to create, we have to tell the table view 
what kind of cell we're using. In this case, we're going to be using the city cell, right? So we're going to create a cell. And you're going to let the table view know what kind of cell it is by using a method called table view dot dq, dq reusable cell with identifier string. So it's the very first option. And here, the identifier, remember the identifier that I set up on the storyboard? This one right here. That's what it's going to use for the identifier in the code over here. So the identifier is city cell. And it needs to know what kind of class of cell it is. In this case, it's also a city cell. So I'm going to tell it that I'm using a city cell class. There we go. So that's how it knows that I'm using a city cell class with the identifier of city cell. Now, if I return just a cell, what do you think is going to return me? Mm -hmm. It's going to return me an empty cells with the default city label that I put, if you recall from here, or state. Let's see what happens. And she was right. It just returns me the state because I have not assigned what each label is going to have. So now I need, to, I need to know how am I going to assign each cell to have that specific state text. So if I go here, the way, if you guys remember from Python, you can access the, the item of an array by calling these data and then you put the brackets in it and then you put zero, right? But in this case, Swift knows which cell is going to be located at. So in this case, this is going to be in cell zero. This is index zero, right? This is index one and this is index two and so on. And in order to tell it which one it is, iOS or Swift gives you the what's called index path. Index path dot row. This basically represents the index of each cell. And each cell represents an index the in integer, in which in this case it would be 0, 1, 2, 3. So now it knows which tuple I'm accessing. I'm accessing each, <clears throat> each tuple from my data over here. So imagine this function like as a for loop. And the index pass is each integer of each cell. So now, now that I have the, the uh, tuple, I want to access the first item. So I know that you guys can recall also from Python that you would access that item by doing like 0 and then 0, right? That's how, we, that's how you would access a, the tuple. And then within that tuple, you have to access another item. So you would do 0 of 0. But in Swift, they do they like to do everything different because it's Apple. They like to be unique. So you call dot zero instead of dot instead of doing another index. You would do it dot zero. And as you can see, it shows me what each item is, right? So remember we have a tuple. So it shows me what it what each item has. Dot zero is a string, which is a state, and the other one is an array of cities. So I want I just want the string. And now, now that I have the state, I, ha I need to set the label of this cell, which in this case is state. I need to set this label equal to the state that I'm going to assign it. So in order to access that label, I just call the cell dot city label, which is what I assigned it before on the output, on the outlet, sorry. And I call the dot text. This is how you access the text of a label. And you set that equal to the state which I just created right now. There. And now, now if I return in the cell, now it's going to actually put each state that I, I had coded in my data. Perfect. Oh, great. So it did do it, but it cut it out. So what I'm going to do is, I'll just make this bigger. Easy. There you go. Perfect. Arizona, California, Florida, Illinois. Perfect. So that's how you do it. That was 10 minutes. So I hope you guys, uh, I'm recording these, so you guys will have them by, hopefully by midnight, because um, these videos are hecka big.
and they take up a lot of space so it takes a, lot, a while to upload but if you guys need to go you guys can go but uh, we're gonna work on next for the, the tumblr lab so we're gonna work on with APIs now so if you guys open up the project that I sent you open up the tumblr lab oh and I will also send you guys the the completed versions of the project so you guys know you guys can check your code see where you messed up or see where your errors are and like compare and contrast so don't worry if uh, if I'm gonna like close this off I will send it to you guys later so if you guys can open up your tumblr lab this is where I already pre-made a couple things already for you it should have a lot of things actually it should have a helper file with the API and this function it's basically a, a struct a struct is also like a class but it's more static and what this does is is that it get the, gets the post from tumblr website and it'll fetch you a bunch of JSON and it should look something like this this is what it returns it returns you a big fat file of, J, of JSON data and what you have to do is clear out everything and from all that data I want you guys to just get the size of the original sized picture of each image from Tumblr and in the end you would have something that would look like this Oops. this is what you should be getting at the end something simple it shows you the pictures of all the from the humans of New York that's where it's fetching all the photos from in order to get started on it you just have to follow up on the the on the steps of code from code path um, I already did steps one and two for you so you guys only have to because steps one and two is implementing the table view and I already had you guys work on that right now so now we're going to work on how to implement an image into the tables instead of just text. So if you guys can go on your, or, um, yeah, if you guys can go on your courses.codepath and we can work on from there. And I will show you guys at the end in like 10 minutes because this should be shorter. Within 10, 15 minutes, I will go over how to do this with you guys. Same with the groups. So... If you guys can work with your groups, everything is on the courses.codepath.com and I'll be I'll be here around to help you guys out. Yeah. Can I get you in this class? So I can yeah. get You're the one of the one that emailed me, right? Yeah. Can you type your information? What's GitHub login? Um, your, your GitHub username. Oh. Cool. So you should have access to it now. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. you have a question? Yeah. Sure. I have Jackson. Jackson? Jackson. He's already in one of the class. He sent you a message asking. Yeah, on Facebook? Uh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm doing right now is I'm making an exception for you guys because um, right. we already went through the, see you buddy, we already went through the deadline to apply, but 
you know, there's always still students who are yeah. who get notified later. But I'll let you enroll since you came today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just I just click add. Okay. Yeah. You should check if you have access to the course. Hello. You also email me, right? Yeah. Is, are you a Jewing? Yeah, I'm Jewing, and it's just like my sisters both want to enroll. Yeah, but Did you? And uh, oh, before I wanted to ask you guys also. You guys already have a. Uh, Took ICS courses, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. So do you have students? Yeah. I'll add you guys. Thank you. Yeah, your information here. Uh -huh. You already did the attendance to oh, the yeah, Google Form? Okay. She also did it. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's the GitHub username. Is that your GitHub username? I think so. I, like the name up here on GitHub is like the username, but it's not the name. Not always, um, but we can check. Let me see. So it would be GitHub.com. This is your your GitHub mm -hmm. audience allocator. Okay, then yeah, that, that's your GitHub. And if you could just check on your um, courses.codepath.com, see if you have access to it. And if you do, then you're good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
You can do either, but usually what I like to do is do it from here. So it gets direct. Yeah, you can name it whatever you want. State label, name, sir, state label, or just label. Perfect. So it's connected because it has the gun in it. So that thing looks good to go. Now we just need to go to our controller. So you need to go. And go down to your table instructions. And here is where we're going to do some of the um, courses that we're going to do. Yeah. I have a question about this. So, sure. I'm doing the API on this one, and then um, similar to the last flicks we used in the day, I believe that their um, JSON is not like this. So, but are we going to go into responses and then we're going to go into posts? No. no, we go into the post. Oh, we because are. as you can see, uh -huh. it's like a imagine an array, right? Mm -hmm. So in here, this is. The first item, data, yeah. and then the second item is response. Oh, the stuff. So this is the only thing, and then post. Oh. So you access the post. Okay, so you don't need to go through meta or responses. Okay, so you just go through post. Yeah. Okay. Just be careful when you look at the index because that that shows you whether you need to go through it or if you just call the one that you need to directly. So in this case, it would just be post. Post, and then. Oh yeah, because um, I will go into this in later lectures, but this is something called a higher order function or closures. So this is a function within a function, as you can see. Because we're in this function, but within this function, we're calling a station.data task, which this is a closure right here. So this is this whole thing right here. It's its own function. Oh, so to make sure yeah. It's so yeah, okay. Because if you if you didn't do self. It will think that you're calling something within this function. Gotcha. But since there's nothing, you have to call self to refer back to before the user. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So since you guys stayed here, I'm, I'll go over the. I'll let you guys work on Tumblr Lab on your own, but I'm going to show you something really cool, which is going to be the search bar. So if you guys recall how it looked like, where is it? It will look something like this where, oh, it's not showing the search bar. But I'm going to show you how to add a search bar programmatically into your own code. And we're going to do it <clears throat> without any storyboards. So in other words, we're going to do all this programmatically. So let me just put this over here. I'm going to go back into my my section, set table section headers. And I'm going to work on this project to show you guys how to do everything from scratch. Cool. So the first thing that we need to do is, since we're going to be creating a a um, what do you call it? A search bar. 
it's going to filter out things that we don't want to see, right? Because when I search up something like Arizona, it's going to take out, clear out everything that doesn't match Arizona. So in order to do that, we're going to create another array that's going to store what's in this array. And I'm going to call it filter data. And it's going to be the same thing as the other array, which in this case, it's a, an array of tuples, which the first thing in the tuple is a string. And the second item of the tuple is an array of strings, right? And we're going to do, <clears throat> and then we're going to call our search controller. Search controller, and that's going to be a UI search controller. There we go. So now we're going to go ahead and it's going to give me another error um, because it's going to tell me the view controller is going to say, hey man, I, I don't have permission to work with search controllers. Shut up. I'm going to allow you now. There. Now he has permission. Now my search controller, my uh, view controller has permission to modify and play around with a search bar. And then the same thing as a table view, it's going to tell me an error saying, hey, I don't have the tools to work with a search bar. Well, I'm going to fix that for you. There you go. You're done. And I'm just going to put this function down over here. And I'm going to create a uh, function that that's going to set up the search controller for me because it's a lot of code. And I don't want to put it here because it, it's going to get too cluttered and it's going to look nasty. So I'm going to create a function called setup search controller. And here, this is what we're going to we're, we're, we're going to do what we do. So if you guys remember how to add table views and cells, we're going to do the same thing but with code. So we're not going to add the, the we're going to add the search bar, but instead of using like the tool here because you can also do it here, the search bar. But we're going to do it all programmatically because it's way easier. Trust me on this one. So in order to do that, I already have some pre-made code because I can't remember and memorize all the code that I write. So I'm just going to transcribe what I have on my code already. So in order to set up the search controller, you need to set it equal to the UI search controller and then inside parentheses search results controller equal nil and I'll explain to you guys what they do after I finish uh, setting them up all all of them and the next one is search controller dot search results updater equal to the self so this is similar to the table view it's just telling telling it that the the view controller is in charge of the updating all the results and then the next step is to set the dims background during presentation equals false. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but I think it still does this on your iPhone. When you search up contacts, the screen gets black, like it dims. It gets a little dark. So I don't want that to happen because it looks bad for me. So I'm going to set it equal to false. But if you guys want to leave it on, you guys can set it to true or don't even add this code. So this is optional. And the next code is search bar, oh no, search controller dot search bar dot size to fit so this is basically telling it fit wherever um, I'm gonna put you on top of the screen but you're gonna automatically adjust your width so it's gonna do that by itself so this is what it's doing the size to fit it doesn't set the height the height is always gonna be static because it's the same throughout all the iPhones it's gonna have the same height but the width is the one that changes because of the iPhone sizes that you guys have. And now I want to set it up on top of my table view, right? So in order to do that, I'm going to call my table view. And I'm going to set the table view header, table header view, equal to the search bar. Search controller dot search bar. There. So now it knows that, now the table view knows what's going to be on top of it. Because you can also put it at the bottom if you want, but that looks nasty. And 
I'm going to set it on top instead. So I'm going to have the table view header include the search bar in there. So it'll make space for it. And then lastly, we're going to define presentation context equal true. I don't know what that one does. That's just from the update that they had. Um, these guys update the search bar constantly. So I had to relearn how to implement the search bar like over the weekend because they did so many changes and Stack Overflow was not keeping up track. So I had to go through their documentation on how to implement it. But now I have the setup for you guys. So let's go over it. So we have the, we have the search bar, but it doesn't do anything, right? Because Apple lets us modif do whatever you want with the text. Do you want it to search or do you want it to index things? Or do you want it to do something crazy with the text that you're going to get from the input? So in order for that, we're going to modify the update search results. So this is a function that deals with handling the text that the user types. So let's get started. So first we need to get the text from the user. And in order to do that, you create the guard let text equal to the search, search controller dot search bar dot text else return. So what this is doing here is guardlet. This is called, this is what it does. It's called a safe, um, what do you call it? Optionals when you, oh. unbinding. It's when, this is how you unbind things that are nil. So there's this thing, there's a topic that I will go over in a couple of weeks called optionals. I know I talked ab about this a little bit last week, but essentially I'm gonna re do a little short recap. Optionals are things that may or may not exist. So in this case, when the, when the app launches, the search bar doesn't have any text, right? So if I tap on it, it's gonna be empty. So if the search controller doesn't know what to do when it's empty, or when it, we have to let know what to do, what the search bar has to do in case that there is no, no text, right? So if there is no text, we're just gonna simply return. Otherwise, we're gonna create this variable called text and that's gonna contain the input of the user. So what the, this is what it's doing. Another way you could have done it is let text equal to all of this. Oh, shit. This is how you do it. This exclamation mark right here, that's called forced unbinding. So that's how you tell, you tell Swift, hey, I want you to, no matter what, even if it's empty, you gotta unwrap this uh, variable. But it's gonna give you an error, so that's why it's already warning me right now that, hey, you can't do this, because it's, it's gonna always give you an error. So we gotta do it safely. But as you can see on the table views, we force unwrap city cell, because city cell exists, we created that, and it's always gonna be existing in our files. So that's why it's fine in certain cases, but for the case of of the search bar, we have to carefully unwrap this optional value called text. Uh, I know it's kind of hard to understand it right now, but don't worry. You can you can delete everything that I said right now. So now we're gonna go into filtering the data. So remember this variable that I created over here? So I forgot to set this up over here, um, but I'll set it up later. But basically, what we want to do is we want to set the filter data equal to the data, right, at the beginning. Because at the beginning, we're always going to have the original content that we had originally. So that's why at the beginning of the application, every time that ever the user launches the application, it's going to have the original data. So now that we have the original data, we're going to modify that filtered variable. And we're going to make that equal to data... We're gonna do the logic now for handling what the what the user inputs has to match whatever items that we have. And to do that, there's a really cool higher order function. I don't know if you guys remember from Python. There's like data dot sort. There's also data dot. Uh, I don't know. Well, let's just stick with data dot sort, right? And you can do other things like the key equals to whatever you want it to search by, like lambda x, and make that equal to blah blah blah, right? Same with uh, Swift. So what you can do with Swift is we're gonna create our own higher order function 
using filter. What filter does is it removes certain items from an array based on a certain <clears throat> based on certain key that we want to find. In this case, we're going to make the key match the keywords of the input. So we're going to create our own higher order function. In order to do that, you just call dot filter and you put the little normal brackets and another one. Is it like that? Let oh no 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 it's not like that. It's like this and then the curly bracket. There you go. So in here we're gonna we're gonna assign the variable, which in this case is gonna be the data. We're gonna modify the data and which each data is going to be so it's like a for loop, right? And dot sort dot key. This is gonna be the lambda x. So this is my variable x. And I'm going this is it's gonna be a tuple of a string and an array of string, right? That's what each tuple has. Each tuple has a string and an array of string. So I declare the type and it's gonna this function is gonna return me a, a boolean, right? And now I can return whatever it is that we need to do. So in this case, I'm going to set the state equal to data.0 because I, I just want to search by the states. And I'm going to return state.localized case insensitive. Why isn't it not auto completing? Let me fix this up for a bit. Oh. Let me fix this up over here. Because it's giving me an error. But filter data. There you go. This is what we want. Bull. There we go. Now it's working. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller so it can fit. Should be working now. Oh, there we go. Where am I missing up? Data dot filter. Oh, it's backwards. Oh, we know I did it right. Oh, I didn't close this one off. There we go. Oh my gosh, these brackets. There. Localized, in case sensitive, but in this case, compare, it's going to be contain. And the string is going to be the text. So now I'm going to explain it. There. Now it should be working. So what I'm doing here is, oh my gosh. There. What I'm doing here is I created a higher order function filter and if you guys remember the like in Python it's doing it by a key which and it's, it's creating my own function so lambda x in this case you just call out the variable which is data and you have to declare a type all that stuff and you have to tell what it's going to return as usual and in that's just how it sets the so it's like a it's like the lambda way of saying it so instead of lambda you say in at, at the end and then you 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 write down your function what it does. So I get the state from the data, right? Which in this case it would be Arizona, California, Florida, etc. And from that state, I have this method called localized case insensitive contains. Basically, it's saying does it contain this text? 
and it doesn't care about the case. So <clears throat> the it, whether it's uppercase or lowercase, if I put a lowercase c, it's going to be the same as an uppercase c. That's what this method does. It compares the text and it checks that it matches some of the characters that I inputted. And then it'll return me true or false. So this, re this method returns true or false. And if it returns true, then it's going to be part of the filter data, new array, the new array that we created. But now we have to make sure that um, once we filter it, the array is going to be modified and it's going to be erased, right? So we need to make sure that if there was no match, we have to return back the original array. So if that's the case, we gotta we have to do an if statement and check that if there are no if there are no matches equal zero, then we set the filter data equal to data again. And that's pretty much it. What happened to the screen? Oh, that one's still working, but this one. There you go. And after we're done modifying everything, we have to reload the table. So we just call the table view dot reload data. So now after we run this, um, it's still not gonna work because we are not using if you if you remember from if you recall from the table view functions, we're using our data array, right? We're not using the filter data. So we have to tell Swift that, hey, we're not going to use data anymore. We're using filter data. So that every time that we edit the filter data, I want you to display what's on the filter data array. So now we just have to modify our, our functions here. And we're going to use filter data instead. Same with the data right here. We're going to use filter data. So now if we run this, it should be working, hopefully. Oh, actually, I think I forgot one thing. Because if it when it runs, uh, it's not going to show the search bar. Let me see. Yep, it's not saying. Okay, I know why. Yeah, I forgot to call the setup search controller. Now it should be working. There we go, we got our own little search bar. And if I type something, there we go. It manipulates the data. If I type something that doesn't exist, it returns me the data that I, the original data that was there. And Florida, you know, California, perfect. So that's how you do uh, search bars. It shouldn't be too complicated. You just gotta look up, the hard part was finding these functions, but I'm already giving it to you guys. And the logic, I already sort of explained what happens with the logic, but um, I won't be surprised that you didn't understand half of what all this means because Swift is a completely new language. Well, not completely new, but somewhat new. So there's a lot of syntax differences, and it'll take a while for you guys to understand how, how comprehensions and how um, higher order functions work. But in the, within time, you guys will understand it soon. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for coming. That was more than an hour. Yeah, I'm going to send you guys the completed version of the project, so don't worry. Um, yeah, the video, I'm about to, oh yeah, let me finish that video. Let me pause it right now.